UFC fight night, Hermanson versus Vittori. Main card picks. It's Harrison Zan here. Going to break these fights down for you. We've got a pretty solid main card. Six fights on the main card. Um, some pretty decent fights. Some pretty good fights from a betting perspective. Some pretty exciting fights from a fan perspective. Uh, so let's, let's kind of get right into it for, for our listeners here. First fight on the main card, we have Nate Landwehr versus Movzar Ivalev, or Ivloev, I should say. Uh, I mean, Ivloev, of course, is coming here as the undefeated fighter at 13-0. and A very high-level striker. Um, of, of course, we see the boxing display that he presents in the ring. Uh, I love the pace that he provides. The cardio never seems to be an issue because that pace uh, is pretty steady, right? Uh, he had a pretty tough fight in his last fight uh, versus Mike Grundy. Uh, showed some good takedown defense at times in that fight. Um, faced some adversity in that fight at times. Um, but, of course, pulled it out. And, I mean, he has a ground game, right? I mean, he has that Greco-Roman background um, like, like many fighters in the UFC today have. And he showed that in the Barzola fight. So, I mean, I, I like a lot of factors here from Ivloev. When I think about Nate Landwehr, I mean, the poor striking defense is, is kind of where it stops for me. Um, I, I actually like Evloev in this one. Um, for me, it's a pretty confident pick. I don't know how you feel about Landwehr in this one if he has a shot, but I don't think he does. Yeah, I think this is, uh, I'm with you on this. I think this is a step down in competition for um, Evloev. Like he just fought Mike Grundy, um, a really good uh, amateur wrestler. Like he's, uh, I believe he went to the Commonwealth Games and he medaled. Uh, he, he fought Enrique Barzola. So he's fought the much better guys. Landwehr fought a close fight versus Elkins, um, which could have gone either way. Um, so I'm not high on Landwehr. I don't think he has a shot here. Anything can happen. Like, any, everybody has that puncher's chance. Um, but I don't think this. I don't think he can land it on Evil Ev. I don't think Evil Ev. I think Evil Ev is durable enough. I think he's smart enough. He'll get this to the ground, and I think he'll do some work. Easy fight. Yeah, I think I, I like... Uh, I'm pretty confident with Evil out here uh, to get the win. But again, yeah, I can't say finish or not because he, he goes to decision a lot. Yeah. Not a lot. Of, I mean, um, but he likes but to he, strike at a steady pace, right? He doesn't seem to kind of push the KO. If he's going to get something along those lines, it's going to be from the accumulation of punches or you just not being able to handle that steady pressure. So. You know, Landwehr too. He's been he's been finished. He's been knocked out by Herbert Burns, choked out by Mark Tirico. But aside from that, in in 17 fights, he has been knocked. So he's pretty durable. Like he hasn't been finished aside from those two times. So it's gonna be pretty hard to get the finish. But Evil Ev should definitely school him, uh, win every round, or he could get the finish. Yeah, and and I think him being the the big favorite kind of speaks to that. So let's move on to fight number two. Of the main card, we have Roman Dolidze versus John Allen. Um, I had a hard time picking a winner for this fight. I mean, let's let's talk about Dolidze a little bit. I think he has some decent decent MMA stand up. I wouldn't put it beyond the word decent. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's great. Um, he does do a lot of feints, a lot a lot of level changes uh, in his stand up. Pretty happy keeping the fight on the feet, even though he seems to have that sort of wrestling advantage or that clinch advantage versus some of his opponents. Uh, questionable IQ, though. Very, very, very questionable IQ. Smiles in the ring a lot when he, when he gets hit. Uh, willing to kind of throw the game plan out the pocket in terms of in favor of entertaining the fans. Um, has that one-shot power, though, but he only throws one shot at a time. And he never really defers to that strength that he has on the ground. Whenever I think about a fighter having one good aspect to their game, but completely negating it, I have to question the IQ at that point. Um, when I think about John Allen, what I see from him, I do see some decent kickboxing from him. Uh, I like the use of his leg kick when in the standup. I think he's willing to engage, like we saw in some of his more, more recent fights. Uh, pretty decent, pretty decent clinch work on the cage. Pretty decent takedown defense, and some good takedowns of his own, as well as some good wrestling here. Um, this is a fight where I think it's one of those fights that are actually going to be pretty boring. Uh, either it's going to be pretty boring, or it's going to end in a KO. I, I think both fighters don't show me much. I think it can technically go either way. I understand that 
Dolize is the undefeated prospect, I suppose, in this situation. But uh, I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the underdog here. I'm going to go with John Allen. I think this is sort of a dog or pass situation. Uh, I don't know if you feel the same, but I'm not too high on Dolize here as the favorite. Wow. Okay. So let me just continue off where you, where you left off. So John Allen out of Brazil or John Alon. Um, yeah. Mike Rodriguez, he beat up, he beat up Mike Rodriguez had a really good fight, but Rodriguez doesn't really have um, any type of grappling. And Alon was able to get him down as the fight went on. But Alon too doesn't have that good grappling. It was just that Rodriguez had zero grappling. And then, the concern I have with Alon is when he fought Vinicius Mariah on the Contender Series. I think it was Contender Series Brazil. And he got schooled. He got schooled by the, by, by, the, by the Brazilian. Easy takedowns. Vinicius got an easy win. Vinicius got the contract. Vinicius went to the UFC, got crushed by Alonzo Menafield in the three minutes in the first round. He got crushed by Eric Anders in the first round. Uh, first minute in the first round. And then he got beat up i mean he got submitted and he's a black belt he got submitted by paul craig in the first round three minutes into that round so losing to venetius mariah the way he lost to him is the reason i'm going to take roman dolite because dolite has high level jujitsu high level grappling he's from georgia i think he should be able to get this done i, I agree his stand-up is kind of it's uh it's not darius kind of green but i think he has the, the power advantage I believe Alon could win by knockout. Alon could could get to him. But I think if Dolite takes this fight to the ground, I think he's going to see how easy the fight is at that point and just continue the takedowns until he gets a finish. So I like Dolite. And I, I'm pretty confident on this pick. I think he's going to get the win here. I think that's a great point, though. I, to, to, to his strength, once he feels how potentially easy it, it is to control Alon on the ground, you're right. I think I can see him kind of addressing the IQ there and, and kind of going back to that and winning a decision or, or maybe winning a, a, a TKO or, or, or a sub or something along those lines. So, I mean, yeah. yeah I'm, 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 I'm but I definitely understand what you're saying. He's, he's fallen in love with his stand-up. Like, a lot of these guys, right, they're grapplers and they can win a lot of fights that way, but it's considered boring. So they feel they need to stand up and brawl, right? So hopefully he just takes it to the ground and gets the win and and i do hope it's uh an entertaining fight because i think that one is going to be very hit or miss in terms of how entertaining it is so let's move on to the next fight here uh this one i'm actually uh, pretty much looking forward to we have taylor santos versus montana de la rosa um i mean what what can i say let's start with de la rosa on this one i think or actually uh, let's start with santos on this one i think she has some pretty good ufc striking I think the boxing is okay, uh, the really good use of the kicks. But that's, of course, by way of her having sort of more of a Muay Thai form. A lot of knees in her stand-up, um, you know, sort of surprise knees. I can see a knee potentially catching someone that, that shoots in, and, and that'll speak to De La Rosa in a minute. Um, she likes to be the first to strike. I do notice that. I do notice she's a bit more of a strike first as opposed to a counterpuncher. And has a pretty good ability to control the center of the octagon. Um, also in the clinch, I like her knees as well, going back to her Muay Thai. Uh, some pretty good takedown defense is something that I saw from her. I noticed that on the cage, she can have that clinch battle, get the underhook, reverse the position, kind of you know rough you up on the cage, take some energy away from you. I do feel like she has some pretty good takedowns, pretty good wrestling, good submissions as well. One of those fighters that I feel sort of has every ability in in the octagon so to speak um but of course there's some things that she doesn't do well i feel like she doesn't do that well when she fights moving backward and i feel like she doesn't quite have the best head movement um when i think about de la rosa i mean she is gonna definitely be ground game first wrestling first she has worked on her stand-up i think she's a very quality opponent you know she like i said worked on her stand-up she has a good takedown a predictable takedown, in my opinion, so that, that could be a bit of a worry. Um, speaking to Santos being the first to strike, De La Rosa is much more of a counterpuncher uh, and naturally backs up. So that's going to be an interesting clash of styles there to see if that 
if the fight ends up going in that way. But De La Rosa, in terms of her striking, it's interesting because as basic as it is, um, it, it goes from starting okay to showing that it's basic throughout the fight to somehow picking up because I feel she has some, you know, she has good heart qualities in terms of wanting to continue to fight. She wears damage though. And that's something that doesn't look good in judges eyes at, at any point. So I think I am saying a lot in this. What's also very interesting is that they have a common opponent, which is Mara Barella and Mara Barella. I mean, she kind of took the same approach to both of these fights with the, the wrestling, the grappling, the clinching, she was able to beat Santos, but she lost to De La Rosa. So I think what's going to be interesting is that De La Rosa does have some elements to her game. That could be a problem for Santos, or that could be a potential road to victory for De La Rosa. But I do think that Santos is just going to be a bit too much, especially with the striking um, disparity. And I think her sort of takedown defense or, or ground game in general will be enough to kind of negate De La Rosa's main advantage. So I feel good about Santos on this one. This is actually one of my more confident picks on this card. Um, but Montana De La Rosa is a quality opponent. I, I will say that. I'm with you. Eh? I'm with you on this. I'm going to say it quick. I like Santos here. I think she's uh, just a bit better everywhere. I give De La Rosa the experience where she has fought in the uh, better competition. But I like Santos's jabs. I like her leg kicks, her front kicks, the Muay Thai in general. I think she's really good in the clinch. And I think if she has um, De La Rosa against the cage, I think that's a – she has really good takedowns at that point. She picks them up, slams them. So I like Santos here to get the win. Plus, Santos, um, in those 16 wins, she has eight finishes. So I think she has more, more power. So when they're striking, she's the one that's going to be dishing out the harder hits. She's a bit better in every area to me, so I got to take Santos here to win this fight. I'm pretty pretty confident on that fight. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. So let's move on to fight number four, if I'm not mistaken here, of the main card. We have Gabriel Benitez versus Justin James. Uh, Justin James is coming, and I think this is his third fight in the UFC at this point. He had a pretty impressive debut against Frank Camacho, uh, knocking him out. Uh, kind of came back to reality in his next fight. That was that was against Gavin Tucker. He's definitely willing to engage, though. He he, he and he has some pop. He he has. I think he's dropped both of his opponents, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, has that sort of Liddell Chuck Liddell like hook with the way he kind of loops it over his head. Um, very questionable cardio, though. I don't know. It's kind of hard to get a read on him because his first fight in the UFC, I believe, was a, a very short notice fight. And his second fight, he looked much better physically, at, at least at the beginning of the fight. But in that second fight, he hit that cardio did not last at all. Um, so I do question, is it his cardio or does it have something to do with it being his second fight in the UFC? Um, when I think about Benitez, an uh, interesting fighter. He's a southpaw. I, I feel like he has a pretty decent jab. I, I like his lateral movement within the ring. I like his one-two. It's pretty sneaky. I can see him, you know, touching James with the one and the two uh, multiple times within this fight. I think he, he also likes that tie kick to the back leg, depending on, of course, the, the, the stance switch. And as a southpaw, he's, more, he's ma mainly going to face orthodox fighters. Um, so I can see him making use of that for sure. And, I mean, he'll throw the high kick in there too. You know, kind of keep your defense honest and, and kind of make sure you're paying attention. I like his defense overall. Uh, you know, he has some pop in, in both of his hands. I like kind of the diversity that he throws. Yeah, he throws a pretty good uh, hook to the body as well, that four to the body. He has some moments there where that hits pretty solid. Uh, the only thing that I noticed about Benitez is that, especially in comparison to Justin James, Benitez doesn't seem to have an extra gear. When he's facing pressure, when... He needs to win a round, whatever it may be. He just doesn't quite seem to have that extra gear. So I think as much as I do like Benitez in this fight, I feel like we have to really consider the quality of competition, especially for this fight as to why I like Benitez in this. I also think Benitez's striking will be too dynamic, and I think cardio would definitely be a factor. But like I was saying, as much as I like Benitez in this fight, 
you always got to be weary of fighters you feel just doesn't have that extra gear. If for somehow, some reason, Justin James activates that other gear, you ask yourself if Benitez will be able to keep up. Um, but I don't think James will land himself in that situation if we're being more realistic. Like I mentioned, I think quality of competition is a big factor here. And I'm going to go with Gabriel Benitez on this one. Yeah, I'm with you on a lot of that. I think um, Justin James is a first round or, or, or miss kind of guy. Uh, he's kind of like a Spike Carla, where that first round, they're deadly. And in that first round, they could put you out. But after, as the fight goes on, if you get out of that first round, they, they lose a lot of that steam, right? They don't have that cardio to keep going. So Justin James definitely um, can get some damage done in that first round to me. Because we know that Benitez is a bit chinny. He he's been he's been knocked out quite a, quite a bit of times. The Yusuf knockout, but that's Yusuf. But the Andre Feely, he, he's been knocked out. So James definitely has the power to land that knockout. But I think as the fight goes on, if he doesn't finish the fight, definitely I'm gonna have to take uh, Benitez. But again, as a gambler, there's a lot of value in Justin James here. Like, I wouldn't I, – I personally, I'm not betting this fight unless I'm taking the dog here, but there's a lot of value. Justin James' topology, look, is, is thinking Justin James as well. Um, Benitez is real, real, real chinny. He can get just knocked out cold and, and laying, on, laying on the canvas. I can see that easily happening. And James has the pop to make that happen. He has that, yeah. He has that – he doesn't have the quality strike and the technique, but he has that power, like – like a spike to make it happen. And James has the wrestling, but he doesn't have the wrestling to carry it on for three rounds, but he does have the wrestling edge. But I think as the fight goes on, if Benitez can get his range, get those legs, get the kicks going low, high, I think, I think, I think he should win this fight. He's definitely, again, the, the better striker skilled technically, uh, but he's a bit chinny. So again, I wouldn't really put that much value in this fight. If you're feeling James, I totally get it. There's a lot of value on James. But if I have to make a prediction here, I'll take Benitez here to take him to win a decision. Or third round, third round finish submission. Somehow submission, knock out third round. Yeah, I think that's a perfect way to, to kind of sum up what could happen in that fight. Justin James is, is very live for a, a, a knockout, very super live for a round one knockout at that. But I think if we're talking, who do we think may win the fight? I think Benitez probably is the pick there. But again, not a super confident pick, but should win the fight um, nonetheless. Let's move on then to the co-main event. We have OSP versus Jam uh, Jamahal Hill. This one is uh, going to be a very interesting fight. I think this is sort of your classic youth versus experience type of fight. I mean, Jamal Hill, I mean, he's... 29 years old, if I'm not mistaken, but pretty green in the ring and in his experience. We look at the records, OSP with almost 40 fights and Jamal Hill is 8-0. and um, So I think, again, youth versus experience is going to be the biggest factor here. I think stylistically at this point in their careers, they're going to have maybe not the same style, but I think they're going to have sort of the similar approach to this fight. Both of them are slightly rangier fighters. Um, they throw, you know, slightly straighter punches. They both quite, you know, they both use the kick. Um, when I think about Hill, some speed for the division, not in his strikes, but in his movement, um, more of a kickboxing style. He'll definitely throw that kick to the head. Um, the Muay Thai seems to be there. Some, some good new, some good knees in the clinch position. I saw him slip some elbows in there as well. Uh, I didn't notice cardio being an issue when I was watching some, some Hill fights. Uh, but I did notice that he really only throws one strike at a time. And that strike that comes to you is kind of slow. So, I mean, that said, with OSP, you just never know which version of OSP you're going to get. You know, 25 and 14 kind of says that all. Skill-wise, he's one of those fighters that kind of has it all. This point in his career, I mean, he seems to just kind of move at – a steady pace. I mean, doesn't really offer much, doesn't really throw much. Uh, and I think this could be one of those fights where maybe not many strikes are thrown in general. But if I think about youth versus experience, 
it's very tough to ever bet against OSP because you just never know which version of OSP you're going to get. Um, but if you put a gun to my head, I am going to go with Jamala Hill on this one. I think youth is going to edge this one out. Yeah, I'm feeling that. I think there's going to be a changing of the guard. I think um, OSP, um, yeah, he got Alonzo out of there in the second round. He looked good. We picked him that fight, actually. Yes. Um, both, we both picked him that. And I think he was the underdog. Was he underdog money that day? I think he was. Yeah, it could have been. Positive, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So we, we definitely called it there. Um, we picked Ben Rothwell to beat him. We both picked Ben Rothwell that time to beat him. We thought he was too big. So I think I don't think um, St. Pru is going to be able to – the only way I think he wins is if he gets his fights to the ground. Um, I think John Hill Hill, I think he has um, the much better strike, and I think the speed's going to be a big thing. I think he does have fast. I think he's pretty quick for that division. I think he's good with his elbows. I think he's, I think he's going to land on St. Pru. I think he's going to actually finish St. Pru. And it's going to be a changing of the guard. Because he, St. Prue's been in the top what, five, seven for the last how many years? We need new blood in there. And the UFC yeah. needs new blood. And the UFC sees something in Hill. I see something in Hill. And I think Hill could, again, the takedowns is the one thing. Um, what's that guy's name? Uh, Stokic. Stokic. What's his name? Stokic. Darko Stokic. Or Stokic. Two fights ago for yeah. Hill. Yeah, Croatian guy. Yo, that guy, he got the takedowns on Hill. But that happened, like, back in January. Back in January. So, you got to think Hill's been training. He won that fight. Hill still won the fight. But you got to think Hill's been training wrestling like crazy. Because he knows he knows his stand-up is, is definitely one of the better stand-ups in that division. He knows if he gets that wrestling. He knows that he's a lot of guys can't beat him. So, I think he's going to improve the wrestling. Keep this on the feet. I think he's going to actually finish, um, finish OSP in the first round. Pretty crazy. But I think he's going to finish in the first round. I can see, and I'll do you one better than that. I think it'll be via that straight punch. I can see it. I, I can see it. I can even see against the cage, some elbow. type of an elbow or something. I can see it. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. Yeah, Bill has a lot of offense, eh? So I just don't like his wrestling part, but he has a lot of offense. And, and, and always Pete does, he has the advantage in wrestling, but when have you really seen him from start to finish, just go for the takedown. He's more of an opportunistic takedown guy. Like, yeah. if you, you, you'll fight on the, on his feet for a large portion of the fight, but if you give him the chance to, you want to hold him against the cage, he might decide to trip you or, or turn you over and take you down. But he's not going for these things. People are kind of putting them in, the, in, that, in, that, in that position. So he's not that guy like a Matt Hughes that's going in there. I know I'm better with, with wrestling. I'm going to take you down from the beginning to the end. So in that time, he's not taking him down. I think Hill can get him out of there. Changing of the guards, like you said, changing of the guards for Jamala Hill. Um, we we feel pretty good about that, um, or pretty decent about that, I should say. Let's go on. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I like I like Hill. I like Hill to get this stuff. Let's go on to the main event. In that case, we have Jack Hermanson versus Marvin Vittori. Um, Pretty interesting fight, pretty even on the betting lines here. We have Marvin Fittori at a minus 140, Jack Hermanson at a plus 120. Five-round fight. How do you feel? Okay, so let's go uh, what these guys are good at. Jack Hermanson, he's been five rounds, so that's, that's huge. So, you know, he has the cardio. Uh, he, has, he has good wrestling. One of the things he's, he really excels at is um, top position and in town. He has good submissions from his back or from on top. He has good um, jokes. He has a good, good grip. Um, Vittori, uh, the younger guy, you know, Vittori has strong wrestling. He has um, decent grappling, like decent jiu-jitsu. Uh, he's definitely well-rounded. I think he's the, the better striker in this fight. I think he's going to have the advantage striking. He has really good takedown defense. So, this is literally a 50-50 fight, and Vegas knows it. Um, but I think Vittori, I think um, with his 80% takedown, again, I know uh, Hermanson has gone the five rounds. I know he has good cardio. But I believe Hermanson has had, had issues with, with these tougher type of guys, like Jared Cannonier, Tiago Santos, Cesar Ferreira. Now, I'm not saying that Vittori's like a – Cannoneer or, or Santos, but he does have that forward movement, that forward aggression like them. 
Yes. Uh, more more than Santos, actually. So I know that Hemet Hermanson wants to get this to the ground. Vittori is very comfortable on the feet. Hermanson will run around the ring a bit, kick, kick, but I think eventually Vittori is going to land. And I think Vittori is going to win this fight. I think, I don't think this is going to five rounds. Yeah. And what's interesting is that if you remember that Vittori fight versus Adesanya, I mean, Vittori won some rounds or he, he had some moments in that fight and obviously lost the split decision at that point. You imagine, we, you know, we always speak about, you know, what is the X factor? Is there an X factor present? And, you know, it could be there for Vittori to say, I, wanna, I want another shot at that. I don't know if Israel is going to go up to 205 and stay there, but you imagine Vittori is kind of in a spot where he's going to be considered. He's going to be considered at some point if he keeps winning to have that shot at Adesanya again, where you feel like you maybe took a round or two from him and obviously lost the split decision. So that could be sort of an, uh, uh, an added X factor, an added motivator for this fight. And I think, like you said, with Vittori, what I really like from him is that constant pressure that he puts on you. He's, he's very confident in his takedown defense to a point where the standup is pretty relentless. And, you know, it's a question of, is Hermanson going to be able to handle that? Is Hermanson going to be able to impose his game? And I don't think that will be the case. Now, what's interesting is that Tapology actually has the opposite of that. They have Hermanson at 72%. And I imagine, as you see here, submission, they think, is the, the, the sort of main path to victory for Hermanson. I also imagine some of that has to do with the fact that it is a five-round fight and Hermanson has been there before. So I can, I can see the vote going in that way, but I do have to say I, I feel pretty decent about Vittori in this fight. I think it's going to be an entertaining fight. I think it's two you know, higher, let's call them prospects, in, in this division, in this weight class, or contenders, I should say. Um, potential contenders, I should say. But I am going to go with Vittori on this one. I like that. I, yeah, you're right. He's just too tough. He's gonna. He should try to. Rough, he's gonna try to rough him up. So, yeah, Vittori's my pick. So, all right. So let's let's take a look at what's going on in Vegas. We gave you our prelim picks, which are still pasted on there in the past, but now we have the entire card to work with. So, let's give them our two golden picks. Who are your two golden picks for this UFC card? Two? Let's, okay. Let, you know what? Let, let's, let, yeah, let's go two. Let's go two. All right, all right. So we got, I like Talia Santos. Yeah. Mobster Evolev, but that doesn't help you out. Jordan Levitt. And Ilya Tapora. Ilya Tapora, yeah, I do agree with that. I do agree with that. Those four fights, obviously not all together necessarily, but if you wanted to put them all together, you'd get almost three times your money back. $100 would return 291 Pretty decent there. Um, yeah, I, I can't think of maybe you might want to consider Hill on that one. Maybe. Uh, who else would I even consider at that point? That's kind of it. <laughs> That's kind of it in terms of the other fights. The other fights are tough fights, right? We went, we went on our side, but a lot of those other fights, like we know how UFC is, right? Yeah, you know, I, I like that. I like that. I think those are maybe the four more confident picks of the card. Uh, I mean, of course, Eve Loeb is going to be probably the most confident, but the payout might not be worth it. So I mean. Take your pick, right? Take your pick. You might want to do Topura and Tyler Santos. And that's a double up on your money. $100 will get you back $202 on that. Um, so I think there's definitely some opportunity to make some money in Vegas here. I think there's four pretty confident picks here. I think there are some underdog opportunities um, presented here. And I think that there are some parlay opportunities here. So this is going to be interesting. What are you betting on? Let us know in the comments. Sorry, cut you off. Who's your underdog pick of the week? Underdog pick. Ah, yeah, I knew you were going to put me on the spot. Okay. Uh, let me think about that. It's better, it's better organic like that. You know, we need the, 
the live responses. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll give you 30 seconds though, 20 seconds, you can mm. through. Okay, let me think okay. here. Let me think here. Ah, man. I don't feel good about any of these underdogs. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> Let's see here. I, I, I guess I'm going to go with the only underdog I went with in the video. I'm going to have to say John Allen. I, I, I just don't see it from Dolize yet. Okay. So John Allen, that's my underdog pick. I think so. Okay, let me give you my underdog pick. 30 seconds as well. Uh, Quinones is an underdog, right? That is correct. I got Quinones. Quinones and Cody Durden. Known as N Durden. Okay. Okay. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that. So there you go. There you have it. You have a few underdog picks. You have a few confident picks, a few parlay picks. Uh, again, let us know what you are betting on in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, comment, share, 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 share. If you bet on UFC, you're definitely going to want to pay attention to our videos. We're giving you these predictions from the perspective of betting. Um, so definitely, again, share that word, spread that word, follow us, press play, enjoy it, and let's make some money. Peace out.